If you're new to painting portraits and you are trying to improve your skills, it may be important to simplify the goals for each of your paintings. And that's exactly what I did with this one in particular. After doing a few more complex works, this one is definitely on the simpler side, I would say. And I find that there's a lot of key reasons why I enjoy slowing down and seeing what things I can fine tune through the process. But before I get into that, I just want to quickly mention I have a Patreon account with lots of tutorials and art downloads in case you want to learn how to paint more like me and improve your oil painting skills. Now, if you're somebody that has just picked up painting, picked up oil painting, or maybe just started portrait painting specifically, it's a really good idea to simplify the goals that you have in mind for some of your smaller works before you jump into those bigger, more complex pieces. The first big advantage to doing this is you have a clarity to what you are trying to do. Now, if you're really early on, you're not really sure how to mix skin tones, you may want to just focus on painting different skin tones by just painting a sphere. Maybe don't even worry about it being a face at first. Try to paint a sphere with skin tones just to see if you can accomplish that. That way you'll get better at color mixing, uh, handling your palette, handling your brushes. All of these things will be a lot easier to improve on when you're not so distracted by figuring out how to paint the nose, the mouth, the ears, all those really complex portions of the face and just stick with that one purpose in mind. And you don't have to overthink this. If you have a lot of aspects to your painting process that you just don't feel comfortable with, just pick one and go with it. See how you can improve it. Do a lot of research online, see what other artists are doing, and maybe get a little obsessive about those particular things that you're trying to get better at. I know for me, when I was first starting and switching from just drawing with pencil and switching over to painting with uh, acrylic paints at first before I switched to oils, I was obsessed with color mixing. I couldn't get a grasp on how to mix colors the way other artists were doing. And my first painting I remember trying to do was a portrait. And it was a very awful experience. I gave up very quickly and it was very frustrated because there was just too much to it that I didn't understand, whether it was the mixing of the colors, how to blend the colors together. There was just a lot of aspects to it that just made it a very frustrating experience. So I think if I had to do it all over again, I would have simplified things and just tried to paint something a lot more simple. And I actually ended up doing that. I started to do abstract paintings just to get a feel for the colors. And after a little bit of time getting used to all the different colors and how they mix together and what looked visually correct as far as color harmony, tones, hues, saturation, all of those things, I graduated to doing a little bit more still life paintings and then back to doing the portraits I always wanted to get back to. But it wasn't just all done overnight. You have to do a few things at a time, focus on certain aspects, get those foundational elements first. So the first goal you might want to have if you're very early on in your painting journey, you may want to think what's the foundational things and that's color mixing, color harmony, understanding, saturation, hues, tone values, composition. All these things are different steps that you can hone in on with each painting. And with that clarity and that purpose to each of your paintings, you will also have a reduced overwhelming feeling to what you're doing. I, with this painting in particular, I decided I didn't want to really go outside the edges of the face too much. I was actually focusing in on brush strokes and trying a different method as far as how I approached the painting process. So I didn't go about this the same way I usually do, where I looked for the biggest shapes first and then reduced down to the smaller and smaller shapes within those shapes to build the portrait. This one was all about starting from the center and working my way out and also trying to have very intentional brush strokes. And that was something I felt I was starting to lose in some of my most recent paintings. I didn't feel like I was trying to put down these really intentional brush strokes. I was kind of scumbling the paint on, not really having these big bold brush strokes. So this painting was a way to step back and just revisit some things that maybe I lost sight of over time. And that's so easy to do. There are so many things that can be forgotten when you're painting that you used to do and you just don't really catch it until later on. And that's when you need to have a sort of fine tuning painting to go back and refocus your skills. Another great benefit to 
keeping your objectives very clear is it creates a consistency to your body of work. If you work on one specific thing over and over and over again to where it becomes automatic, to where it becomes something that you don't even have to think about, all of a sudden that particular aspect of your work, that style that you start building in is going to look very consistent. And that's something that you really wanna have, especially when shopping your work around to different galleries. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you can't dabble in all kinds of different styles of artwork. You should definitely try all kinds of different things, but try to give yourself a chance to focus in on each of these different ideas that you have to give them the full chance that they deserve to see if that's something you really enjoy doing. But once you start to figure out what you like, try to narrow down your purpose so that these ideas can fully blossom and mature. This will also give you a chance to really track your progress if you're jumping all over the place, trying a lot of different things. If you're doing that, it's really going to be hard to track your progress with very specific goals. So for this painting, I'm trying to track how much I can improve my brush stroke techniques. And without having that simple goal, it's going to be really hard to see if at the end of this painting that's been improved on if there's a bunch of other things happening. Say I decide to paint over this right away and try some other new stylistic choices. It'll really be hard to see after a day of letting this dry and taking another look at it to see if I really achieved that goal that I had set for myself before I started painting. There's something else that I've noticed that happens when I really narrow down my goals for a painting is when I am looking at the color harmony for a painting or I'm just not liking how the colors are playing off each other. For whatever reason, something color-wise is just not working. So I will obsess over the next few paintings, seeing what I can do to adjust those actual colors a little bit one way or the other, but not go too far. And then I'll accidentally come across something that is really completely new that I never would have thought of. And it's because I was forcing myself to think outside the box with that specific goal that I came up with a unique solution that I would not have figured out otherwise. At the end of the day, I think painting and improving your painting skills is just like anything in life. You have to slow down and observe what you're doing and observe where you maybe need to improve things and just work on those things step by step. Try to keep it as simple as you can because when you keep it simple, it's easier to track your progress and see yourself improving. And that way you can check that off the list and go to the next thing that you need to improve. And after you've gone through all these nice, simple goals that you've had for a while, you'll notice that your entire painting process is much better and you're making better work because of it. Now, if you are wanting to learn more about my painting process, like I mentioned before, check out my Patreon page in the links below. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. I will talk to you again very soon.